Hey, good morning everyone! So, it's a weekend and uh, outside is really bad weather. It's a rain, it's a wind, but inside it's warm and nice and I have my nice uh, and uh, warm cup of tea. And today I'm planning to continue to work on my vertical stabilizer. So, I received my pneumatic squeezer dice right here, you see? Well, Aircraft Spruce, thank you for a great job delivered on time. I just picked them up this morning and it's Saturday, so Saturday delivery is great. Well, so basically today's uh, plan is all about riveting, riveting of the skeleton and probably I will be able to start something about the attaching the skin into the skeleton, but for now I'm just gonna be trying and playing around with my pneumatic squeezer and dice for rivets and see how it's gonna go. Well, by the way, also I order it and receive very nice tool that's to check how rivets are installed which is a really nice tool I already read about it on the internet how to use it that's basically the checker tool like after you rivet in and just to calibrate your eye just to know what's about how rivet is good or bad sit inside you will use that tool to check it I will show how it works later of course and well yeah let's see how it's going let's see how it goes and um, Hopefully you're gonna see something interesting for you, learn something probably, and uh, well, and I hope you can use it as the sort of the guidance, like instructions for your own assembly of RV10, should you start one, and I hope you're gonna start one. Well, let's take a look. So the first mistake, but before I explain what uh, I did wrong and why I did wrong, I just took two general plates of metal not related to RV10 project. So we have like lots of holes here, that's basically for the wood uh, attachment, right? From the Home Depot. And I have a little tiny rivet here, so I just put it inside of the hole so you can see there's a rivet. And I'm holding two pieces now. I'm taking my pneumatic squeezer and I'm checking how that thing hell works. So I'm pushing it up and from the bottom, so you can see it. Yep. And now let's take a look how it looks like. Nice, clean, clear. Now we take our set of test, uh, testing uh, plates. We find number, I guess number four, yeah, that should be number four. That's our number four. We're making sure that our uh, uh, opposite side, which we just squeezed, doesn't fit in the hole, it doesn't fit, so it's okay. It should not fit in that hole. And we're also making sure that we are within the minimums. within the minimum so that our yeah you see so we doesn't go over it so basically we are we are totally okay so this rivet is properly placed in its place now what are you drawn squeezer uh, uh, the pneumatic squeezer right the bottom part goes up the top part stays on the same spot. We must push with the top part the rivet into the part, like into the, uh, let's say for this case, the rounded part, so basically into the surface, while the bottom part will be squeezing. In my case, when I did my first rivet, I incorrectly placed that rounded part on the bottom, in opposite way. So again I did the same mistake like I did in one of my previous videos. So this part which goes out under the high pressure must squeeze actual rivet, not push it. So it must squeeze it. In my case it's 
it went in opposite way and because of that I did run riveting I had to drill it out well now it's fixed so far and now I will try on the real uh, part of the airplane to rivet one more time and see how it's gonna go Well, the best part is when you can involve other people to work for you and you can just supervise them. So that's what I'm doing right now. You're watching how I'm supervising how others are working. That's my wife Kate and my daughter Maria. So, what have been done so far? Like, I have riveted all the required parts of skeleton already. So basically that is riveted and the only two parts left unriveted are on this side. The two portions of skeleton because we will have to remove them to access inside with a bucking bar for the riveting. And basically I put the, with the help of my wife and daughter, I put a skin on. And so we now have a skin also click out to the, uh, to the skeleton. The next step will be actually to start riveting of the skin. I'm worried about it a little bit because, well, I have to figure out something now, how it's gonna go, but I'll try probably on the side. So on those places where I can easily uh, drill out the rivets if something goes wrong, but otherwise, well, it should be nice and it should be doable. So let's see.
one important moment which I found on my own experience with the bucking bar. Well, I read about it actually. <laughs> After I found it yesterday, I, I read about it and uh, yeah, realized it's a problem. So, bucking bar, right? When we are uh, riveting inner, uh, like, whatever, any uh, rivets here, we, we use bucking bar and we attach it to the inner surface of, of the skin in our case right now. So, when we put it like this inside, what's happening with bucking bar? When we hit with the rivet gun from one side to the rivet, it obviously hits to the backing bar on this place and obviously backing bar replies with the same uh, force, right? F1, F1 equals uh, equal, uh, minus F2, so same force. And by doing that actually we are riveting, we are, at the, we are, we are placing rivet. But what's happening with the back side of the, uh, of the backing bar? Whenever we push here, the back side of the backing bar hits our skin inside and bend it. Well, there are little dents on the other side, one or two here, just little ones, and uh, there are tiny ones, probably I can fix them, but it's not nice. So, what I did, I just used a simple solution, the thing we used. I could probably wrap it in a towel, uh, towel paper or probably in some, some soft, I don't know, something soft, like just, just wrap it. But I found the simplest way for now, this we used to put on the um, bottom side of the legs of the uh, of the chairs right so that's what i used here i just attach it here it's uh, it's actually self stick uh, self stickable it holds nice and now whenever i put my uh, my backing bar inside this actually contacts with skin and because it's soft it doesn't bend the skin and uh, my skin is fine so as you can see one two three and on the other side everything is fine on this side so that's a solution which i found and uh, well i guess each builder finds his own solutions and share, uh, share them with the community. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to share what I found. Anyway, let's continue. Let's see how it's going. And uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to finish today uh, most of the rivets on my uh, vertical stab. That's it for today. I'm done with uh, whatever I could, whatever I could do. Actually, whatever I had time for. Uh, so, what I want to say, what I want to conclude. So, uh, first of all, the vertical stabilizer, riveting. Um, first, very important moment is uh, adjust your uh, rivet gun well, especially the pressure. I have some tiny dents here, there which I don't really like, 
But unfortunately it looks like, well, that's a part of the game, I can't do anything about it unless I order a new skin and just completely unrivet everything and rivet it again. Well, uh, probably those dents will never be fixed because I don't see the way, reasonable way how to fix them. Especially here in the middle, in the front, I have tiny dents. It looks like the inner center, um, inner middle front rib I don't know, it was a little bit more narrow or something, but anyway, it looks like it just it just squeezed a little bit the uh, material, but not that much anyway, it's fine. Uh, next thing, very important thing is that if you riveting your bucking bar, as I said before, that make sure it's, I don't know, it's wrapped in something, uh, something soft, because otherwise you're gonna make lots of dents on the inner skin, which I did a few. Uh, aside of that, well, that's fine. Uh, I did one little mistake actually on the other opposite side. I riveted the line, which I was not supposed to rivet, uh, and it made me uh, more complex to reach to inner uh, inner surface of the uh, vertical stabilizer to put a, to, to 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 hold there the backing bar. But it's okay. I was I was able to do that, so it's fine. But just follow instructions precisely. Like if they say do this. Uh, amount of rivets from here to here do only those do not do any extra despite the line can continue and you think maybe they have they forgot to say about it in reality no if they said to do it between line a and line, line b only do only that well that's it that's all for today uh, thank you very much for watching for subscribing i will continue next day uh, I'm planning to, next day I'm planning to completely finish riveting of the vertical stop and start to work on my uh, rudder. And actually for my rudder I already put aside all parts, so I will start with, uh, as usual, like with uh, cleaning everything, with the machine deburring everything. It's going to be same, pretty much same amount of work which has been done with the vertical stop, but counting that I have already some little experience by doing the vertical stop, and I should do that part better in my opinion. So, thank you for watching and have a good one!